I'm sure that all of you have heard of Radio City Music Hall and the, uh, the Christmas show and the Rockettes. Well, you know, uh, my grandfather, my father's father, Harry, had a really um, great job. His job was to make the ballet shoes for the Rockettes in Radio City Music Hall, and he loved that job. In fact, when we were little kids, we used to say, Gramps, what do you do for a living? And he'd say, ah, he says, I keep 50 goyles on their toes. He loved, he loved the Rockettes, and they loved him. They used to call him uh, Handsome Harry. And we were little kids, my cousins and I. He would uh, let us go backstage, you know, for the Christmas show. And there were all the animals there, you know, the donkeys and the horses and the sheep and all of those things that a kid from Brooklyn never sees. And then there were the Rockettes. And they would go out on stage and we would be backstage watching them, you know, and they'd be doing, don't worry, I'm not going to try to do it. They would be doing their kicking and kicking and dancing and dancing and it all looked so, so easy. But I guess it must have been very hard because when they came back stage, there would be a, a line of chairs and each Rockette would sit in that chair. And my grandfather and, you know, the other men that he worked with that made the ballet shoes used to go in front of each Rockette and kneel down and unbutton or unfasten their ballet shoes and you know, rub their feet with oil. What a great job, huh? And then stand up and go to the next rockette and do the same thing, I guess, because their feet hurt so much from dancing and they were kind of sweaty and bruised, a little bit broken, hurting. And years later, when my grandfather retired, and he reminisced, he reminisced quite a bit. He said that um, that was the most important part of his job. He, he said it wasn't making the ballet shoes for the Rockettes before the Christmas show. He said it was when they came backstage and they sat down on those chairs and he would go to each one of them and unfasten them untie their shoes and uh, rub their feet with oil. He said, and I always remembered it, he said, you had to be so, so careful, so, so gentle, how you unbound them so that you didn't wind up hurting them all over again. I've always held on to that, because isn't that um, what Christmas is really all about? It's being set free. It's being unbound. I mean, Jesus comes to us in very poor and struggling people, and he, God comes to us as a baby so that we would never ever have to be afraid of God again. I mean, who could be afraid of a little baby? You know, when we come to this Christmas, maybe there are things in us that maybe need to be set free, unbound, careful, careful, so that we don't get hurt all over again. Maybe this is a wonderful time this Christmas. You know, maybe in the midst sometimes of our loneliness and fear about this virus, to let something go. You know, maybe something from our past that's burdened us and, you know, in the beauty and simplicity of a little baby, just to be able to unbind that and 
and set that free. You know, maybe it's time to let go of the hurt somebody else has, has done to us. You know, to not hold them in their worst moment, but to uh, untie them, you know, set them free, forgive them. It really is the beauty of Christmas, isn't it? How we untie each other, how we set each other free, gently, 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 so that none of us ever gets hurt all over again. So whatever grace might be working inside of you that the Christ might be born, whatever you know, grace might be working inside of me so that I can be free and reborn, maybe that's what it is for all of us. In the midst of darkness comes light. In the midst of struggle comes peace. In the midst of tears comes tenderness. In, in the midst of not being able to find our way comes a sense of comfort and, and direction. So Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry, Merry Christmas. Take that into our hearts. Take that peace inside and breathe it in, you know, where ever we are and for, for however long it takes us before we can finally come together again.